Hello, I'm Nam Fennell Malloy. With the season two finale approaching, I would like to invite you the opportunity to submit questions, comments, and suggestions for the season two after show, which will air on September 19th during the week of the podcast's one year anniversary. If interested, you can send an email to rediscoveredmovies at gmail.com or a voice message on anchor.fm slash rdmoviespod no later than September 15th. You can ask me anything from behind the scenes moments to the guest features on the podcast, or you could share your favorite moments from the podcast or film suggestions for future episodes. Just remember you have until September 15th to submit your questions by email or voice message on Anchor. I want to be what intimidates me. The Art of Self-Defense is up next on Rediscovered Movies. Hello, welcome to a brand new episode of Rediscovered Movies. I'm your host, Nam Fanel Malloy. So the movie here it, that I'll be discussing is a fun one. It's interesting, but also a good time. So the film that'll be the focus is The Art of Self-Defense. The Art of Self-Defense is a 2019 dark comedy that's written and directed by Riley Stearns, who's known for directing films such as Faults and Duel. It stars Jesse Eisenberg, Alessandro Nivola, and Imogen, Imogen Poots. So here's the synopsis. So we have, so our main protagonist, Casey, played by Jesse Eisenberg, He's attacked uh, on the street at night when he's on his way to buy uh, food for his dog. So he's beaten up by a motorcycle gang. So essentially, like, after that happens, he joins a neighborhood karate studio to learn how to protect himself. And under the watchful eye of a charismatic instructor named Sensei, and hardcore brown belt, Anna, Casey gains a newfound sense of confidence for the first time in his life. But when he attends Sensei's mysterious night classes, he discovers a sinister world of fraternity, brutality, and hyper-masculinity presenting a journey that places him squarely in the sights of his enigmatic new mentor. So the film premiered at South by Southwest uh, back in March 10th, 2019. It had a limited, sorry, it had a limited theatrical release on July 12th and expanded uh, on July 19th. So when it opened back in July 12th, it opened at number 33 with just over $114,000 because it was it opened in seven theaters, and then when it expanded on the following week, it was at number thirteen with just over a million dollars. So films that beat a diss at the box office include the Lion King remake, Spider Man Far From Home, and Toy Story Four. It made over two point four million during its theatrical release. In terms of reception on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a eighty three percent critic score. Here's what they have to say with the consensus. The art of self-defense grapples compellingly with modern American masculinity and serves as an outstanding calling card for writer-director Riley Stearns. The audience, however, gave it 63%. The film is available to watch on demand, so check your local provider. All right, let's go to first discoveries. So... I be- so I think I first saw this movie, I can't remember if it was 2020 or 2021. So I stumbled upon it uh, when I was looking for a movie to rent on the Cineplex store because I think during that time I saw a movie in the theater and I had like a free like voucher for a rental. So 
I decided, yeah, like, I'll choose this movie because for me, like, I do like watching karate or martial arts movies. And also, too, like, after learning about the premise, like, I found, oh, like, it'll be interesting because it's essentially like a com- a comedic version, like, of a martial arts film that I find, like, I rarely see, probably with the exception of Stephen Chow's films, like Kung Fu Hustle, and probably, too, like, with some Jackie Chan movies to an extent. But, like, here, this one is clearly, like, a satire. And so when I first watched it, I thought, oh, like, I was intrigued. Like, I enjoyed it. But I wasn't sure what to come up with when, because especially when the movie got dark, I'm just like, eh, I don't know. But on repeat viewings and also when it came to the podcast, like, I enjoyed the movie more because essentially I loved, yeah, that it's a comedy, like, for a karate movie, it doesn't take itself too seriously at times. And also, too, I enjoy the performances, like, from the cast and so forth so and also too i would say that i was certainly not attend that dojo for for a couple reasons like also too like that dojo has a crematorium in the back office which makes you think like you know like did they kill off competition or like those that try to threaten the dojo it's like Clearly some, like, shady stuff is happening in that dojo, so, yeah, I would never want to attend there. Plus, um, I was gonna say, too, like, because I used to do karate, like, back, like, when I was little, when I was, like, I would say, like, elementary school and, and, like, middle school. So, for me, yeah, like, like, for me, like, with my background karate, because I went up to black belt. So, yeah, like, I found, like, it was realistic at times when it came to like the moves and so forth but in terms of like how things are run for for sure like it's not realistic so i'll get into that later but yeah like it's just fun to see like you know a different side of karate but clearly here is more of a very dark sinister side to it So let's go on to highlights. So for me, I enjoyed Casey. Yeah, I like, I found with Casey, like with Jesse Eisenberg as Casey, it was perfect casting because essentially like here, he is like the awkward and like the loner, but he has like a charm to him because we see here like he, he's, he's an accountant and Clearly, like, he tries to fit in. Like, we see, like, when he's at work trying to talk with the co-workers and he notices the magazine and, and like, they, they kind of, like, push him to the side because clearly, like, he doesn't fit in. And plus, they're kind of upset that, oh, that he pretty much is in charge of, of the expenses and all that stuff. So, yeah, it feel, it feel kind of sorry for Casey, like, at first. So, I would say, too, like, like, in the opening scene, clearly, like, he's uncomfortable, like, when he's at the restaurant, because we overhear, like, this French couple, like, they're talking about, like, their erections, they're, they're speaking French, <laughs> and, and it's, it was a surprise to know that Casey, he is learning French, so he understands what they're saying. <laughs> so, yeah, clearly, yeah, Casey, he loves to learn languages, I suppose. I wonder, though, like, if it's, like, to to fit in or if it's more of, like, personal interest. It could be a bit of both with his character. And, yeah, like, even though he lives a lonely life, he has his dog. Um, it is a German breed. I forgot the, the name of it. But, yeah, that dog, like, is adorable. <laughs> Because, like, even when there was a moment when he has to get food, but after when, like, he's attacked, like, he clearly doesn't want to go out in case if it happens again. And then pretty much, like, the dog looks sad because he doesn't have food, but yet Casey feeds him 
I guess, leftover spaghetti. But yeah, like, I love that dog. It was just sad that the dog died. Because I guess we, we later learned that, that I guess Sensei or maybe what, well, we think was Sensei, but it turned out to be one of the students, like, brutally beat it up the dog. And, like, it was great, yeah, that Casey kind of got his revenge to speak of. Because, like, yeah, clearly he loves that dog. And, like, the dog didn't hurt anyone. So, like, yeah, it was frustrating to see, yeah, the, the dog die. But I guess at the same time, too, like, it kind of, like, you know, wakes Casey up from being in a cult, per se. Because, <laughs> um, cause, like, when, like, he decides to do karate, clearly for self-defense, but he says uh, for health and fitness... <laughs> Like, we, we see, like, a different side to him. Like, immediately, like, when he gets the, the yellow belt, like, he kind of starts to feel more, like, confident. And, like, he, he's, like, becoming more and more interested in karate. And also, too, like, it delves into, like, this whole thing of, like, masculinity versus femininity. Because, essentially, like, the sensei tells him that, like, you know, his name is, like, feminine, and also, too, like, with the type of music he listens to, because KC, he likes uh, adult contemporary, but Sense is like, nope, you need to listen to metal music, so, so clearly, like, you know, Sensei kind of pushes him to be more, like, assertive, which works to an extent, but, yeah, and so, yeah, like, clearly, like, like, with the karate, I just wondered, though, like, like, was it made, like, with good intentions? Because we see, like, with Sensei, like, he respects Grandmaster, who he has, like, the picture up uh, on the wall in the dojo. But, but then we learn that, like, he's extorting people, like, blackmail... That's why, like, I wonder, like, is it supposed to be, like, a front? Or is he just doing this because the business is struggling? Which, that part I'll get into, like, in the low light section, but... Yeah, it's it's kind of questionable with his motives, but... Yeah. And what I, too, like, so... I just mentioned, yeah, that... I found the karate was kind of acting as a cult. So with the whole, yeah, masculinity and the femininity, also to, like, with the music, and he wants, like, Sensei wants Casey to, you know, be embrace Germany, like, with the, the German shepherd he gets, and also to him learning German, and the night classes... Yeah, because the night classes are very, like, brutal. Because, like, there's a moment in the film when, like, Henry, who's uh, the blue belt, like, he is really keen on getting the black stripes, so he kind of sneaks into the night class, which he was invited, but Casey was invited. And, <laughs> and Sensei breaks his arm during a demonstration which I'm like whoa that is brutal <laughs> and essentially like Henry he gets uh, kicked out which is kind of like fr it's sad it's frustrating especially like when it came to towards the end when Sensei finds Henry's uh, body he's hanging from the ceiling so clearly like Sensei doesn't care about him because he burns his body through the the um the serum hang on just wrote it here through the ser do, 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 do. the the crematorium yeah yeah crematorium so yeah and also too like 
when they essentially have to beat up unarmed people, like, that's also an example of, you know, the cult's behavior. And essentially, like, Casey, like, in a way, he's kind of like a robot. <laughs> because he's essentially like, oh, shut up. Like, we're going to s- listen to music together. Or something like, oh, let's do push-ups. I love push-ups. Push-ups are fun. You know, something like that. So, <laughs> so like, in a way, though, like, he, he kind of, like, loses agency because he's essentially, like, doing what the sensei tells him to until like he he finds his uh his dog dead but yeah and so with the karate clearly rules are important so we see like on the dojo hanging there's the 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 board that has like the 11 rules which includes the guns are for for the weak people so I would say like yeah like when I was doing karate like there wasn't like a set of rules that was hanging on the dojo that I went to but they do clearly like establish like what they expect from the students so essentially like you know you know show up on time always wear your uniform and your belt and like be ready to go like so forth so it doesn't so I guess like when I did karate like it wasn't too strict, unlike in this movie. But, but yeah, like, clearly, though, like, with the rules, like, he wants people to have, like, discipline, because, because with karate, it's not just good, like, for physical health, but also, like, for mental health, health as well. And it was interesting, though, like, with those, rules in mind like Casey he breaks them so justifiably because he like after when his dog dies like he just he he shows up at the dojo he like eats food like on the mat he he wears his shoes he doesn't bow (laughs) and pretty much the sensei confronts him and all that stuff and then like later on like Casey he shoots uh, sensei and pretty much sounds like oh you might say oh guns are for weak people saying that i'm weak but you're dead so you're wrong (laughs) and i thought too though like that was like a nod to the film that he was watching earlier when um in in that scene the detective shoots the serial killer i'm assuming like because he was supposed to arrest a serial killer, but then the detective is like, nope, like, I make the rules. Or he's essentially saying, like, there are no rules. So, there you have it. Um, also, yeah, I liked Anna. Like, it, it was, I felt kind of sorry for Anna, because clearly, like, Anna, like, I would say, like, out of the characters in this movie, she has the more, like, good intentions, because she... Like, she wants to excel, like, in karate, because that's why, like, she's very keen on getting the black belt, but gets upset when it's passed on to Thomas because she's a girl, which is ridiculous, because clearly, like, it should be about talent and, like, who is, like, best suited for the position, but, but yeah, which is, like, frustrating that pretty much sensei tells Casey that oh Anna will never get black belt because she's a girl ridiculous um in terms of scenes um I liked yeah there was Casey's first lesson when he is um doing like the drills with the other student I forgot his name um so (laughs) it was quite hilarious that like the other student he when he kicks case he's like flying across the room <laughs> and and pretty much like he tells casey oh like you need uh your kick to be like a punch essentially the kick has to be you know aggressive i guess to qualify it as a punch to be honest like like that's ridiculous because a kick is a kick and the punch is a punch but okay 
And yeah, like, and, and it's so funny that afterwards that he immediately signs up for classes because, because clearly though, like with Casey, like he doesn't want to get into that situation when he gets beaten up. So that, and also too, to feel included in the group too, because like I said at the beginning, like he was pretty much like the loner, like when you saw him like at the restaurant and then him at work and also at home, even though he has a dog, but still he is essentially alone and and in in ways kind of like treated like garbage with other people. I would say like too, like with the karate though, like I think people start to like take him in, but like clearly though, like with Sensei, like takes advantage of him because he even says at one point oh like you you remind me of myself so interesting also to another scene casey when he tries to fight sensei in front of the kids (laughs) because honestly like if i was like one of the parents i'll be just like what is going on here and like i would take my child out of there immediately (laughs) but i thought yeah that was cool (laughs) and also to like the belt ceremony so you see yeah that casey like he gets the yellow belt which is great which which boosts his self-esteem and then gets him to you know be invested in karate but it was also kind of sad that henry doesn't get the black stripe because we didn't we didn't see too many moments with Henry, but but we could tell yeah that like he he's invested in karate, but I guess because in ways he I don't know doesn't fit in with the rest of the group. That's why like he's kicked out and doesn't get his stripe. Also, too, I liked when Sensei like he is alone in the dojo before Casey arrives towards the end of the movie. Because it was kind of, like, just great to see Sensei, like, him just alone in his environment, per se. Because, like, he's he's invested in karate, but there's also the other side to him, too, which is quite deceiving. But at least here, like, he's kind of more peaceful, let's, let's say. Like, even though, like, he essentially like cremates henry in the back office which i wondered like why is that there in his office but and also who who else did he cremate or had to cremate like with the people that they killed at you know night did he take them to the back office to cremate them (laughs) but yeah so anyways yeah like we see like with with that scene with him alone, like it was just nice to see him, you know, not be a piece of garbage, <laughs> I would say. Um and yeah, every time like when I see him getting shot by Casey, it always takes me like by surprise because it's clearly unexpected. And then it goes on to sh- yeah, t- to show that like, yeah, pretty much Casey doesn't go by the rules. But again though, like with sensei kind of hurted casey like on a personal level like especially when he discovered the videotapes of the attacks including his and i assume though like with the videotapes like probably he sensei uses it as blackmail or as leverage to get them to say karate in order to pay and all that stuff but but yeah like like casey like he was justified to do all that stuff for obvious reasons and but yeah like i always get caught off guard every time i see that also along to like with thomas the other student that turned out he killed his dog because we see the bite marks on his wrist (laughs) because i guess he deserved to not just for that but also to like for getting the black belt over anna because I'm sure Thomas is talented as well, but but clearly like Anna has been there longer, and honestly, like she has more merit than Thomas. And 
I guess a final note, I'll say, like, I'll talk about, like, the technical aspects of the film. So, Yellow. Yellow really is, like, an important color in this movie. Because usually, like, with Yellow, like, associates with joy, with happiness, that sort of deal. But, like, here, like, with Yellow, maybe, like, there is happiness, but to an extent because like i said this movie gets dark like i would say like on the bright side with yellow like we see like casey with the belt like he's very like he's happy because he's more confident and then like he's feeling himself um and like also too i would say the yellow lighting yeah there's lots of yellow lighting like a little like muddy yellow like especially at the beginning like it's very like with the opening sequence is very like washed up and also too when casey is walking at night to get food like we see some yellow lighting and even in the poster yellow background so yellow is very yellow yellow so not mellow yellow but lots of yellow um and also too like there was lots of pans because you would see either pan you will pan either up and down or side to side which kind of like reminded me of 70s or 80s like movies that will use the pans because i just wondered though like if it's supposed to be like a nod to like you know like those movies or tv shows that uses that or maybe too like to show like you know like the quirkiness like for like the characters or maybe like to show that oh like something is something is up like to get into i guess like the mystery like either of the dojo or of the characters so forth and like i thought like with the um the montage of Casey doing the lessons, like it, it does lots of pannings, but like quick cuts with the pans. I thought, yeah, that was cool on a technical scale, and I thought, yeah, too. I loved, yeah, like the the writing, the directing was was solid in this movie. And for me, like as a person that did karate, like I I, I enjoyed this as a martial arts movie, even though like it's more like as a dark comedy like i still enjoyed like you know for for what it is like it wasn't too fancy like with the moves i would say like it's i would say it's basic for for the most part which is fine like you don't have to go to fancy smanshy with with the moves but but yeah like it's it's solid Like like i said like the in terms of the moves like it's realistic I think, yeah, too, with the the belts are realistic, too, except for the rainbow one, because I'm like, yeah, I don't think there's a rainbow belt, but, but yeah, because usually, like, with the rankings, because it'll depend on which karate you do or, or which uh, type of martial arts you do, but usually you start with white, and then yellow, and then orange, green, blue, brown, black. So, yeah, that's pretty much the highlights that I have. Let's go on to lowlights. So, I have, like, a few questions. So, I wonder, though, like, is this karate a scam, like, or is it a front? And honestly, like, I'm not sure, because, like I said, I'm assuming, like, they had good intentions to start the dojo and all that stuff. But with this night classes and then all those shady stuff, like, what's the deal with that? And also, too, like, beating up unarmed people. I'm just like, why? Like, essentially, is it to stay, to make them stay in the karate? Like, I just wondered, like, if that's the case, like, Why don't they mention that the karate is struggling, that they need money or some sort? 
And then, because clearly though, like, with Sensei, he's, he's a little messed up, even though he idolizes Grandmaster. So I just wonder though, like, was Grandmaster, like, a part of this scam, or did this happen after Grandmaster passed away? Something to think about. And I just wonder, too, like, why with Anna, like, she keeps telling Casey, like, you know, you need to leave, you know, this is not for you. And then I just wonder, though, like, if she's telling him that, why doesn't she herself leave? Because... I bet, though, like, if, if Casey hadn't shot Sensei, like, Sensei would still be running it and doing all this, like, crazy stuff. So, yeah, like, because she could have left as well, too, but she didn't. Because, yeah, also, too, like, I didn't get, like, if you wanted to blackmail the students, like, why force them to beat up unarmed people? That doesn't make sense. Like, why not, like, have them, I don't know, like, look for bad guys or or something like that. Like, actually use the karate, like, for good to, you know, to find people that, you know, the police are not able to catch. Because they could have done that, but, because honestly, like, having them beat up, like, I guess, innocent people, it kind of makes them... Um, other than innocent. And yeah, that's pretty much what I have for the low light section. So we could go on to the trivia. So there wasn't too many like facts I could find with this movie. So like with the facts I could find. So the the movie was filmed in Kentucky. It's great. The photograph of I guess Grandmaster uh, apparently is a picture of um, apologies for mispronunciation um, of Mori Hai Ishiba Osensei the founder of the martial art of Kido. So apparently it implies that the master trained as an Aiko, Aikidoka. So Aikido loosely translates loosely sorry translated means the way of spiritual harmony. This is puzzling since Aikido is a grappling art more akin to Judo than to the striking art karate. And another fact um, is, yeah, the dojo rules. Let's go over the rules. So, number one, no shoes on the mat. Understandable. Number two, no food or drinks on the mat. Understandable. Number three, bow when stepping on and off the mat. Okay. Number four, always bring your belt. Yes. Number five, wash your gi. Absolutely, because hygiene is important. Number six, respect your opponent. Yeah. Number seven, tap or hair it snap. Or I guess, yeah. And number eight, tap or take a nap. Which is a bit of the same, but oh well. Uh... Number nine, stay hydrated, of course. Hydration is key. Number ten, if it works, use it. Okay. And number eleven, guns are for the weak. So I'm fine with rules one to ten. But with number eleven, I didn't really get how that applies to the dojo. Because you learn, like, to fight with all sorts of weapons except for guns so it didn't have to be included for the set of rules but i get i guess to show that oh that you essentially don't want a fair fight with with using a gun but again it could have been removed as a rule you could have just i don't know said that like as a philosophy Pretty much to show that, oh, if you use a gun, you're a coward. That's so to speak. And lastly, the writer and director, Riley Stearns, he trains and teaches Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Which is, yeah, interesting. Because I just wondered, though, if he consulted, if he, like... Yeah, probably, yeah, I would say, like, if he... I'm assuming he applied his... 
his experience in jujitsu with this movie. So, yeah, I found that, yeah, that's, which is crucial. Because, I guess, yeah, like, it shows, yeah, like I said, with the karate aspect of the film, to be more realistic. But, yeah, which is a great skill set to use, I guess, for a martial arts movie. So, lastly, like, I usually ask this question. Should this movie be rediscovered? And I say absolutely yes, because I loved, yeah, the comedy aspect of the film, the dark comedy. Like I said, like, the cast and crew did a great job of the film. And what else? Yeah, the karate, I would say, is good. And... Yeah, love the other technical aspects, like with the panning and the use of yellow. So that's pretty much it. So that, yeah, concludes this episode of the podcast. So you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Numfi Malloy. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at rdmoviespod. You can use the hashtag rdmoviespod. You can answer the featured question on Spotify. You could like, share, and subscribe to the podcast on your preferred platform. You could also leave a review. And also, too, you could submit questions, comments, and suggestions by email, which is rediscoveredmovies at gmail.com, where you could also leave a short voice message on anchor.fm slash rdmovies. Pod. So I want to say you guys like thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the podcast. Until next time. <laughs>